I spent the first part of my career as a journalist. I spent most of those days taking notes. It's the bread and butter of being able to write good news stories. The lessons I learned carried over into my years as a manager. I always took a lot of notes. Why trust your brain when you can keep an accurate record on paper, or in my case, in Evernote? Hi, I'm Dave Edwards. Today, note-taking in Evernote. Let me show you how I do it. First of all, I resist the temptation to write down too much. My job is to not take all of the minutes. You know how it goes. Uh, you sit in a meeting, you start writing down pretty much what everybody says. You end up with a lot of notes, but quite frankly, most of what you write down really won't be all that helpful to you. So the first important lesson is not to feel like you are taking the minutes, unless, of course, that's a task that you have been assigned to do. I pretty much always try to avoid taking minutes because I want my notes to be helpful to me. I like my notes to have structure. One of the things I'll point out is this is a template gallery that Evernote has created, and it's very, very helpful. Uh, as you can see, there's just a ton of different options if you want to use a template that other people uh, have designed. Uh, it just runs the gamut. And among the many templates there is a template uh, for meeting notes, and you can just go ahead and start with this. Start with a title. Uh, put down the name of your project. Uh, it says class, but it could be your, you know, your company's project, uh, where the meeting is taking place, what's the goal of the meeting, who's in attendance, and then just very simply, uh, you know, write down the tasks that emerge from the meeting, important decisions that were made, and closure, uh, any kind of summary and takeaway. I always, I think this is actually a very important part. Now, this is a template that I particularly like, although, to be very honest with you, you don't need a fancy template to uh, take a good note. I've used this template, and I have no problem with it. I think it's very, very good and very convenient. You might, might want to take a look at this one as well. But let's go back to a blank, a blank sheet uh, so I can give you an idea of how I typically do this without a fancy uh, note template. So here are the important things the way I view it. Every note has to have a title. Now, I think every good note should start with a date. You can start dates any way you want. I happen to like this format um, so I know what the year is and I know what month and date I've taken the, the notes in. Um, this helps me take a look chronologically. So, for example, if the I also want to write down that, you know, we were having a budget meeting. Once I have these filed in the appropriate folder, this will set up a chronological summary of all of the meetings that I had. So a title, however you decide to do it, should be something that will help you uh, find this note again. The next thing I like to do is to list the names of the participants. And that's all it really has to be, just who is at the meeting. Now, if someone has joined the meeting to whom I don't really know, uh, I might want to write down this person's contact information. That will help me uh, locate the person if I ever need to follow up with Bob Smith. And depending on how well I know Bob or why he's in the meeting, I might also want to include uh, his title and the company or organization that he represents. I don't need to do that with uh, the other people. Uh, because clearly, you know, in this case, I would know Judy Jones, and I would certainly know Mickey Mouse, and I would know myself. But the participant section, I think, is important to a meeting. And I will typically put a line to separate that from uh, the body of my notes. Then I try to write down what is important, and that is key. Just writing down the things that are important. Again, not writing down everything that is said, but try to capture all of the action items, the major points of view that are represented. And then in that case, I like to uh, note them with individuals. So let's say there's a proposal to eliminate 1% from the budget. Now, that would be a pretty significant topic that was discussed. I want to record who says that. So in this case, I would put Judy's initials. Um, I typically like to take notes in kind of a hierarchical outline format. 
So I would leave proposal to eliminate 1% of the budget. And then I might say um, uh, discussion led to a half percentage point cut. All right. And I could note who said that as well. Now, if I am in this meeting and we make an assignment uh, for uh, Judy to investigate uh, the cuts, uh, then I have a number of options. I can make that a task. Uh, I typically like to use tags uh, for all of the people who report to me or all the people who I'm directly involved in or in directly involved with so that I can follow up with them later. I have other videos about how I use tags. But I don't just leave uh, uh, an item here. I want to make sure that this is recorded as a task or it's uh, highlighted by a tag or something like that. Anything that is said that just blows me away could be a quote or an idea. Uh, I make sure I capture it and I will typically uh, put a couple of stars next to it. Now, the most important, one of the things you're going to see here is that when I hit a couple of stars, if I um, uh, complete the three star set and then I go on, you'll notice that it creates a line. I don't want a line there. So you, you just hit delete or backspace and that'll just give you your stars. And then, um, you know, you can record the important thought that was said or the quote or whatever else. So those three asterisks or stars that's my way of kind of, you know, making those things jump out at me later. If it's something that I don't understand or I want to research further, well, that's a task. So I will set up a task like that. Uh, another thing that you can do if, if things are going fast and furious and you don't want to take the time to set up a task right, uh, right at that moment, I might type three question marks and then type the item that I want to uh, research further. If I'm really going fast and furious and I want to later create a task, I might just type task and then later on um, go back and create the actual task. That depends on how fast the meeting is taking place. Or after the meeting is done, I like to spend a little time reviewing my notes. I'm a lousy typist, so usually I have to clean up what I've written. I, I, make, my, I make sure my tasks are correctly captured. Um, I make sure that anything that I needs follow-up gets converted uh, to my task list, or as I said, uh, depending on how I use this, how I might tag Judy uh, in my note. Now, one of the other things I like to do with my notes is, is to create another section. So here we're going to add a line, and then I like to have a summary section. Now, I, I tend to, you know, write down important points of the meeting in this section below. And at the very end of the meeting, I like to review these important points uh, with the attendees and the meeting, uh, just so we make sure that we're all on the same page. So I can say, okay, look, folks, I, I, before we wrap up, here are the main points that I've, uh, that I've captured from the meeting. We have the following follow-up tasks. Um, I promise to investigate this item. And other people can offer other things that they thought were important, and they will go below the line. If you remember our original, um, our original template, if you choose to use this one, uh, it does pretty much the same thing. It's a much more condensed version of what I do, but if you have the discipline, uh, you might want to open up this uh, meeting summary template, and uh, you can do all of the tasks right in here, um, the important decisions that were made, and then the summaries and the takeaways. I just like to have a little bit more uh, space to write, but uh, this is basically a, a really good format. Uh, if you want to pursue it. I hope that helps. Hey, let me help you be more productive in using Evernote. I can show you how to build a productivity system that will work based on the Evernote application. Now, maybe you've tried other methods that have failed you, or maybe you've even tried Evernote before, but found it kind of difficult to set up. I can help you. I've been using Evernote as the core of my productivity system for more than a decade. While I don't work for the company, Evernote has certified me as an Evernote expert, so I can help you design and use your system. Find out more about my course, Evernote for Beginners. Just go to daveedwardsmedia.com and click on Courses.